we're going to be talking about inland shrimp farming on this video. And uh, let me give you a little quick history of uh, inland shrimp farming in Alabama. It started back in 1999 with uh, two producers. And uh, one producer had a pond that didn't work out right, so we had to concentrate on a second pond. And uh, the, both these ponds were over in Greene County. And uh, we found out that with our inland shrimp water, our well water, our highly saline water, that shrimp would actually grow in this water. Uh, the shrimp were growing at about two grams per week, which is considered very good in the shrimp industry. The uh, producer ended up harvesting 1,500 pounds of shrimp in this one acre pond. And the survival was real poor. We weren't concerned at that time about the survival. We were just kind of impressed that, hey, shrimp would grow in this salty water we have in, in uh, West Alabama. So the next year, we uh, stocked ponds again and, and started looking at why these, why these shrimp weren't surviving very well. And since then, we've come up with some really good recommendations on how to improve our production, how to improve um, survivability. The species that we use for inland shrimp farming are Pacific white shrimp, Lithopeneus vanami. This is a tropical animal that we're raising in a temperate environment. These shrimp will die when water temperatures get below 55 degrees, which usually occurs about mid-October in central Alabama. Since 1999, our shrimp acreage has, uh, has gone up to about 100 acres and, and has come back down to about 80 acres. So we're holding now at about 80 acres of water. And uh, we, we currently have about five producers. In this video, we're going to briefly go over pond construction, pond preparation, water quality, transportation and acclimation of post larvae, stocking, nutrition and feeding, water quality management and aeration, production, harvesting, marketing, even cooking the shrimp. Hopefully this video will be informative and is intended to be only introduction to inland shrimp farming. If you're interested in getting into the production of inland shrimp farming, we encourage you to consult with your extension aquaculture specialist and current shrimp producers. And of course, figure out where you're gonna market your shrimp beforehand. So let's go see some ponds getting constructed right now. talk a little bit about pond construction right now. If you notice in the background here, we've got two units that are dragging what we call dirt pans. Each one of those pans is about maybe eight, 10 yards of dirt. And those pans have much more compaction than a bulldozer. So you cannot build a pond effectively with a bulldozer. Bulldozers don't have enough compaction ability. This obviously is not going to be a shrimp pond because it's too big. It's going to be a catfish pond, but you use the same kind of equipment with a shrimp pond as you do a catfish pond. Most shrimp ponds in Alabama are between one and a half and six acres. There was one farmer that had a 12 acre pond, but he took that one out of production because it was just too big to manage and, and too many shrimp were coming out and it presented marketing and harvesting difficulties. Um, shrimp ponds are, are vastly different from catfish ponds. Ponds have to be specially made for shrimp production. Shrimp ponds have the following features. They're designed for quick and complete drainage. All the water must exit the pond upon harvest. You can't have any pools of standing water because these will hide the shrimp. Shrimp are usually captured on the back side of the dam after flowing with the water through the dam. So in other words, the, the water is drained down with the shrimp and the shrimp are captured on the back side and lifted up on top of the dam for uh, weighing and icing down. And we'll show you a harvest operation later on in the video. 
Another big difference with shrimp ponds is they have to be very, the, the bottom slopes have to drain quickly. In other words, you've got to have a bottom slope with a greater than a 5% fall. In other words, the pond is 300 foot long. The difference in elevation should be about one and a half feet from the top of the pond to the other end of the pond. Pond depths should not exceed six feet and should have an average water depth of four and a half feet. There should also be a concrete head wall or what we call a scour apron in front of the barrel pipe inside the pond. The drainage pipes in a shrimp pond are oversized compared to a catfish pond. For instance, a two acre pond will have a 15 inch pipe. Pond drains are large so that ponds will drain in six hours or less. A holding box for the shrimp is placed below the water line on the back side of the pond, back side of the dam. And the width of the levee should be a minimum of 12 feet for harvesting equipment. Shrimp ponds have to be levee style ponds. You cannot use a watershed pond for shrimp production because if you get a, a large, a heavy rain, it will flush out your salt and it may stress the shrimp. Be warned that small ponds will be expensive. The larger the pond, the cheaper it will be to build on a per acre basis. For instance, if you build two one and a half acre ponds side by side where they share a common levee, there will be roughly 15,000 yards of dirt between those two ponds. And currently pond construction costs in, in 2006 are between uh, 95 cents and a dollar and a nickel a yard. So roughly a dollar a yard to build a pond. One more thing I should point out is used saline pond water should be recaptured and used again in the next production year. Discharging saline water into the environment could be illegal in some situations. Let's talk a little bit about water quality. I'm standing behind the Alabama Fish Farming Center in our bioassay area. The best advice that I can give you on this video is to have your well water checked for the suitability of growing little Pinaeus vanami or Pacific white shrimp before you actually do any investment in infrastructure. What we'll do is we'll uh, take your well water and we'll put it in an aquaria and we'll see if your shrimp will grow in that aquaria and we'll compare your well water to artificial seawater full strength and also artificial seawater diluted down to the salinity of your well water. And uh, we'll study whether or not one, the fish, the, the shrimp actually survive, and two, whether or not you get a pretty good growth rate on them. Um, Pacific white shrimp are what we call urehaline, means that they can tolerate wide swings in salinity. We know through uh, research and through actual growth trials that the higher the salinity, the better off the shrimp will do if they come under stress. Now, we've, we've also know that well water in, in West Alabama may be deficient in two key elements, potassium and magnesium. And we will look at your well water and we can recommend how much potassium and magnesium you need to add to your well water. This is done very frequently and we'll actually see an example of this adding 